Good evening, everyone. We are now live in SolidWorks User Group Philippines for Master Surface Modeling in SolidWorks. So inviting you to join us, like and follow SolidWorks User Group Philippines in uh, Facebook. Uh, inviting you to join SolidWorks Users Philippines in Facebook and we are also in LinkedIn, SolidWorks Users Philippines. So inviting you to please do register for tonight's session and we'll see you in a few minutes. Good evening, sir. Okay, so yep, uh, good evening everyone and welcome to Surface Modeling in SolidWorks. Okay, so I think we have shared to you a course about LinkedIn. So the reason uh, that we are also promoting LinkedIn is that uh, we have trained, we train a lot of uh, students for them to have uh, technical skills and the next step would probably helping them out. Uh, land jobs or secure clients. So that is where uh, LinkedIn comes into uh, place. Okay, so good evening also to our friends in College of St. Benilde, our industrial designers. Good evening to you, everyone. Good evening to our friends in University of uh, Batanga. So yeah, good evening also to you. Yep. In addition, we are also in LinkedIn. The group is SolidWorks uh, Users uh, Philippines. I'm going to comment it down for you to uh, join us uh, there as well. Okay. What else? So, yep. Uh, in addition, don't forget to join our brothers and sisters in Digital Creatives uh, Philippines. Everything about digital creativity. Uh, Digital Creatives uh, Philippines is there to help. Okay, and once more, our Facebook group for SolidWorks Users Philippines, commenting it down, hoping to see you here as uh, well. So once more, SolidWorks Users Philippines. Okay. So this evening... We are uh, going to discover the tools uh, used for surface modeling. Okay? And uh, <laughs> this evening, we are going to model this hair blower out. Okay? We are going to model this hair blower using the surfacing tools of SolidWorks. Okay, so this one is a simple uh, hair, hair dryer, hair blower. And once more, the tools that we are going to utilize to create this in 3D as a concept design will be the surface modeling tools of SolidWorks. Okay, so yep, uh, we encourage for those, uh, yeah, we would like you to obtain a certificate of course completion and uh, whenever we say we mention about certificate of course completion we require everyone to send a proof that they learned they have learned something uh, from our live stream training and online courses so as you can see <laughs> your the required submitted output is for you to recreate this uh, blower using the surface uh, modeling tools of SolidWorks. Okay, so let's begin. Let me share my screen now. So once more, uh, sharing to you our final output. Okay, so heading, heading back to SolidWorks. So let's now begin. Welcome to Surface Modeling in SolidWorks. Let's begin by creating a new part. With this home screen, I can select part or head up, selecting new, and that would be a new part document. 
selecting part and the selecting OK. Your tabs may be slightly different from mine. To enable the essential tabs needed for surface modeling, just head over to a blank area on the toolbar. And from here, I'm going to right click under tabs. I'm going to enable surfaces, mesh modeling, and direct editing. For now, I prefer working on millimeter gram second units. Let's begin by creating a sketch, heading over to our design tree, hovering over front plane, left click on this and select sketch. I'm going to bring in a product image that will serve as our reference. The length of this blower coming from this point, going to this point, is around 9 inches. Before we import this image into SolidWorks, I'm going to create a line with the length of 9 inch. Hitting L for line. I'm going to drop its first point at our origin. In addition, make sure this line is perfectly horizontal. Left click here and hit escape. Let me turn this line into a construction line under options, enabling for construction, hitting S, and selecting smart dimension. Selecting this horizontal line, once more it's 9 inches. I'm going to type in 9 and IN for inch. Selecting the green check mark and hitting escape. Let me grab our folder to where we have extracted the exercise files. I'm going to copy the location of this reference image, hitting Control C, heading back to SolidWorks, this time heading over to Tools. Under Sketch Tools, moving to the right and below, we're going to select Sketch Picture. Let me paste the location of our reference image. Select that image and select Open. Let's zoom out. Making sure Enable Scale Tool and the Lock Aspect Ratio is enabled. Let me grab this handle on the upper right. Let's resize this. Zooming in. And uh, pulling this image below. And aligning its uh, tip with our horizontal line. I'm okay with this position. Let's decrease the opacity of this image, heading over to our sketch picture under transparency, enabling full image. Moving the slider to adjust the transparency to around a value of 0.4. Selecting the green check mark. And let's exit out of this sketch. Okay, so that's how we can insert an image in uh, SolidWorks in addition. Good evening and thank you so much uh, who made this live stream possible. Uh, good evening to our friends in Bataan, Peninsula State University, Palawan State University, Central uh, Polytechnic State University. Of course, to our friends in Digital uh, Creatives uh, Philippines, to IRIST. Yes, to our friends in Iris, good evening and thank you. To our friends in TUP Tagig, good evening as well. And also good evening to our friends in JPSME, Batangas uh, Chapter. Okay, so yep, 
Heading back, let's now create the extrude uh, features, the thin features. Moving forward, let's create a circle representing the nozzle of our blower that we head over to our right plane, selecting sketch, holding my right mouse button and moving to the right to enable circle. Let's drop its center point at the origin, left click. Let's grab Smart Dimension, holding my right mouse button and heading up vertically, selecting this circle. And for its diameter, I'm going to key in 1.7 IN4 inch. Hitting Escape. Double left click anywhere on our blank graphics area to exit out of a sketch mode. Let's create another sketch. Heading over to front plane, selecting sketch. This time we're going to trace out the outline of this blower. Let's begin by converting this circle into an entity. Heading up, selecting convert entities. Entities to convert is this circle, selecting the green check mark. Next, let's trace this outline up using a spline. Heading up, selecting spline. Let's drop the first point at the endpoint of this vertical line. Left click here, left click, left click, left click. Left click, left click, and double left click. Hitting escape. Feel free to refine the contours of this spline by grabbing the points. In addition, feel free to grab the Bezier handle to refine the curvature of this spline. Next, I would like to create an arc here, selecting three-point arc. Let's place our first point somewhere around here. Notice the blue dashed line, so it's snap track. To disable that, simply hold control. So I'm going to left click here, left click here, holding control to disable snap tracking and left click hitting escape moving forward let's mirror this out to the other side heading over to mirror entities selecting this spline for entities to mirror enabling copy and we are going to mirror that about to our top plane Hitting spacebar for orientation and heading back to front view. And uh, selecting the green check mark. Notice we have a conflict. To simply resolve this, we are going to select the symmetry relation and uh, delete that. For the details on this area, we're going to utilize splines once more. So heading up, selecting spline. Once more, holding control to disable snap tracking. I'm going to left click here, left click, left click here, left click, left click, and double left click. Hitting escape, and let's refine the position of this spline points. Let's create another spline for the detail here. And I prefer mirroring out this spline. So heading up to mirror entities. Entities to mirror is this spline. Enabling copy and I'm, I'm going to mirror that about. Heading over to our design tree and selecting top plane. 
hitting the green check mark. Next, I would like to refine this section, but first we need to delete that uh, symmetry relation. So selecting this spline, heading over to existing relations, and right clicking, selecting delete symmetric 20, hitting the green check mark. Notice we have an overlap here, so let's refine this spline, selecting this spline points, moving them out. and hitting escape. Let's create another splines on the right side as well. Heading up, selecting spline. Creating another spline on this area. Creating another spline here. Left click. Holding control to disable snap tracking. Left click here and double left click. Hitting escape. Moving forward, let's zoom out and create another spline for this separation. Heading up, selecting spline. Dropping our first point here. Holding control, heading to front view, adding points here, tracing out the separation, following this contour and I'm going to simply double left click here. Hitting escape and inspect. Looking nice. And lastly, let's finish this up by adding one last spline for the detail here. And let's zoom out. And notice these are all underdefined. So to prevent ourselves from accidentally moving these entities, I'm going to create a window selection. And on the properties, I'm going to add a fix relation. And a double left click on our blank graphics area to exit out of sketch mode. Okay, so once more, we are doing a, a concept, concept phase, or you can say at least a reverse engineering of uh, this lower using surface modeling. Okay, and uh, before we proceed further, once more saying uh, thank you to our friends in uh, CMU or also to our friends in uh, Don Mariano Marcos. Anyways, uh, DMMMSU. Uh, to our friends in USJR, Savior University. Uh, shout out to our friends in Intramuros, uh, Manufacturing Mechanical Engineering Student Council. Okay, so going back to SolidWorks. Let's now create our first surface, heading over to Surfaces tab. And my intent is to create a revolved surface using this spline. But first, let me head back to Sketch 3, edit this sketch. And because this spline is coincident with this line, I'm going to turn this vertical line into a construction geometry. Hitting escape and let's exit out of this sketch. Adding back to surfaces and selecting revolved surface. Selecting this spline. Let me clear out our axis of revolution. 
right clicking on this selecting clear selections that axis of revolution will be this line and for the selected contours activating this selecting this spline Angle of direction to be 360 and selecting the green check mark. Our next intent is to create a swept uh, surface for this handle. Let me head over to our design tree and turn on the visibility of sketch 3, selecting show. Next. Heading up under surfaces or features, heading over to reference geometry and the selecting plane. For our first reference, selecting this point. Next, selecting this spline. Selecting the green check mark. Let's now sketch on this plane. Selecting this plane and the selecting sketch. Zooming in. And let's orbit this out. Head over to sketch. And we're going to select ellipse. Let's place its center point at this endpoint of the spline I'm okay with this diameter and with this size let's inspect hitting escape and instead of adding a dimension, I'm simply going to select this and uh, fix this out. Let's exit out of this sketch. Double left click on our blank graphics area. And before we can finally select swept surface, let's create a new copy of this spline. Heading over to front plane, creating a new sketch. Heading up to Convert Entities, and the entity to convert is this spline. Selecting the green check mark, exiting out of the sketch, heading over to Swept Surface. For the profile, it will be this ellipse, and for the path, to make sure, I'm going to head over to our Design Tree. And select Sketch 10. Selecting the green check mark. And let's turn off the visibility of this sketch by selecting any of these entities and selecting Hide. Let's turn off the visibility of Plane 1, selecting this and selecting Hide. Let's now head to our Design 3 and turn on the Visibility of Sketch 3, selecting Show, head over to Surfaces tab and select Extruded Surface. And that surface will be this arc. Let's change the direction to Mid Plane. I'm okay with this length. Selecting the green check mark. And let's turn off the visibility of sketch 3. Selecting any of these entities and selecting hide. Let's now trim things out. And instead of selecting trim surface, I prefer heading over to mesh modeling and selecting split. For the trim tools, let me select this revolve the surface. Next, I'm going to select cut bodies and select this bodies. Selecting the body inside and selecting the green check mark. Let's turn off the visibility off.
this body, selecting this body, selecting hide, selecting this body, selecting hide. Moving forward, let's utilize split once more under mesh modeling, selecting split. The trim tool will be this surface, enabling cut bodies, selecting this body. Selecting the green check mark, turning off the visibility of this surface, selecting hide, enabling split once more. Trim tool to be this surface, cut bodies to be this surface. Selecting the green check mark and reselecting this surface once more and turning off its visibility. Let's now utilize trim surface to trim out this face. But first, let me turn off the visibility of our sketch picture. Heading over to sketch one, turning its visibility off. And I prefer having a section view Heading up, selecting section view. I'm okay with this orientation. Selecting the green check mark. With this face now visible, let's now head up to trim surface. Trim tool to be this handle. And for remove selections, it will be this face. Selecting the green check mark. And let's finish this off by merging this three surfaces into one. To do that, heading over under surfaces tab to knit surface. Selecting this surfaces. Enabling merge entities. And selecting the green check mark. Notice we now have one. Let's turn off section view. And to be organized, let's rename this surface. Selecting this, right clicking, selecting rename three item to main body. Hitting enter. Okay, so let me reiterate the need uh, for renaming uh, bodies because we are be we are going to be creating a lot of uh, surface uh, bodies here. So yep, once more, don't forget uh, to be updated by joining us in YouTube. So we are also in YouTube. It goes by the name of SolidWorks uh, Users uh, Philippines. So if you head over to videos. Under this uh, drop down, upcoming live streams, as you can see here, next month will be sheet metal creation. Uh, following that, multi body, and we'll be discovering assemblies. Okay, so shout out also to our friends in Batanga State University, Mechatronics, Holy Angel University, and uh, to our friends in Bicol University. Same also to our friends in. Polytechnic University of the Philippines. So, yep, uh, going back to SolidWorks. Let's finish this up. Let's head back to our sketch picture and turn its visibility on. Heading to front view. My intent here is to add a fillet on this edge. Let's now head up. Under Features, Selecting Fillet, making sure we are in front view. I'm going to select this edge for items to fillet. And I prefer the radius to be 10 millimeters. Hitting Enter. Let's add a fillet on this edge as well. But first, we need to fill up this hole and to do that 
we're going to head over to fill the surface and that patch boundary I'm going to select this edge leaving the defaults selecting the green check mark notice on our bodies we now have main body and that new surface let's now stitch these two surfaces up heading over to knit surface and that two surface will be our main body and this newly created surface and I'm going to enable merge entities leaving the defaults selecting the green check mark notice it's now surface knit 3 and to be organized let's rename this I'm going to select surface knit 3 right clicking selecting rename 3 item notice as I rename this back to main body we are told here name previously exists with that in mind I'm going to rename this instead to main body dash 02 indicating this to be our second revision let's add that uh, fillet heading up to surfaces selecting fillet and uh, selecting this edge the radius I prefer this to be 5 heading to front view let's inspect looking nice selecting the green check mark moving forward let's now turn off the visibility of our sketch picture heading over to sketch one selecting this selecting hide and back to our design tree to whirl surface revolve one and let's turn on the visibility of sketch three let's now extrude this splines into surfaces heading up under surfaces selecting extruded surface let's select all of this splines let me scroll down activating selected contours selecting this splines hitting our spacebar heading over to top view and let's change the direction to mid plane making sure that the extruded surface goes way past the outline of our blower I'm okay with this length selecting the green check mark inspecting and this time let's turn off the visibility of this sketch selecting any of the entity and selecting hide and before we carve out this new surfaces to our main body let's first offset our main body to do that I'm going to head up selecting offset surface let me twirl down our design tree and I'm going to select for offset parameters our main body 0 2 making sure the offset is going inside and I prefer an offset distance of 3 millimeters hitting enter and because we are starting to produce numerous surfaces or surface bodies let's get organized heading over to our feature manager let me head over to front view hitting spacebar for orientation selecting front let's rename surface extrude 4 with this selected I'm going to right click selecting rename 3 item let's rename this to top dash right detail 0 1 selecting this surface this one right clicking 
selecting rename three item let's rename this to top left detail dash zero one selecting a surface extrude four right clicking selecting rename three item renaming this to mid left detail dash zero one selecting extrude surface four right clicking selecting rename three item naming this to mid right detail dash zero one selecting surface extrude four right clicking selecting rename three item naming this to bottom left detail dash zero one and for surface offset zero two right clicking selecting rename three item let's rename this to internal dash body dash zero one okay so in addition also saying good evening and thank you to our friends in uh, Sorsogon State University, to our friends in Philippine Integrated Fire Protection Organization. Good evening also to our friends in Bicol Regional Council Student Units, PSME. Of course, to our friends in uh, PSME Metro South, uh, PSME uh, Paranaque Chapter. Okay, Ed Tarlac State University. They're also watching us right now. So thank you guys. And yes, we are also in uh, Twitch, inviting you to join us. If you're also a gamer, we are also in Twitch. Okay. And yeah, let's head back to uh, SolidWorks. Our next intent here is to trim out, okay, uh, the remainder of uh, these surfaces. Let's begin trimming surfaces by utilizing the split command. So under mesh modeling, selecting split for the trim tools, it will be this surface. Let's scroll down. I'm going to select cut bodies. Next, I'm going to select this body. Selecting the green check mark. Selecting this newly created surface and turning its visibility off. Let's repeat split, heading up, selecting split. This time, our trim tool to be our main body. Activating cut bodies, selecting this surface. Selecting the green check mark. Selecting this split face and turning its visibility off let's inspect our surface bodies and to be organized let's rename split seven with this selected i'm going to right click renaming three item to main dash a body zero three selecting split eight renaming this to top right detail dash zero two another method of repeating a command is by right clicking under reset command selecting split trim tool to be this body selecting cut bodies i would like to cut out this body selecting the green check mark selecting this body turning its visibility off repeating split right clicking on the recent command selecting split trim tool this time to be our main body selecting cut bodies selecting this body selecting the green check mark Reselecting this body, turning its visibility off. 
Let's repeat this process all throughout. Once more, selecting split, trim tool to be this body, selecting cut buddies, selecting this body, selecting the green check mark, selecting this body, turning its visibility off, right clicking on the recent command, selecting split. Selecting our main body, activating cut body, selecting this body, selecting the green check mark, selecting this body, turning its visibility off, repeating that procedure over here, right clicking under recent command, selecting split, trim tool to be this body. Selecting cut buddies, selecting this buddy, selecting the green check mark. Just turn off the visibility of this buddy. Once more, selecting this, selecting hide. Using split once more, right clicking. On the recent command, selecting split, selecting our main body. Selecting cut buddies, selecting this buddy, selecting the green check mark, turning the visibility of this buddy off. Lastly, once more, right clicking on the recent command, selecting split trim tool to be this buddy, selecting cut buddies, selecting this face. Selecting the green check mark, selecting this body, turning its visibility off, right clicking once more, recent commands, selecting split, selecting our main body, selecting cut bodies, selecting this face or body, selecting the green check mark, selecting this body, turning its visibility off. Inspecting, let's now head over to our surface buddies and to be organized, let's rename this body. So internal body, top right detail, let's change split 10. With this selected, right clicking, selecting rename three item to top left detail dash let's check if zero two is possible it is selecting split 12 right clicking selecting rename three item mid naming this to mid detail dash zero two selecting split 14 renaming this to mid right detail dash zero two selecting split 15 renaming this to our main body dash let's check if zero three will work out so this should be main body dash zero four split 16 selecting this right clicking selecting rename three item naming this to bottom detail dash let's check zero two and we are on the right track okay Yep, uh, in addition, we are accepting OJTs or uh, interns. So if you're interested in making a difference, okay, so again, uh, one of our mission is to elevate uh, to elevate and influence our young ones into STEAM, STEAM, not STEM, no? The importance of art, okay, uh, professions in the near future. So we are also accepting once more. OJT's interns, and uh, before we wrap, 
things up. Thank you once more to our friends in University of Mindanao, Tagum College, and uh, University Student Government of uh, TUP Tagig. Also, good evening to our friends in Wacom, uh, Wacom, Wacom users, users community. Okay, heading back to SolidWorks. Moving forward, we are going to merge surface bodies. Let's begin by selecting these bodies, holding control to select them all. I have selected all and leaving internal body out. Next, let's now head over to surfaces and select knit surface. On the Properties window, we are going to enable Merge Entities. Leaving the defaults, selecting the green check mark. Let's rename the newly Merge Bodies. Right-clicking, selecting Rename Tree Item 2. Main Body-05. In addition, let's create a section view. Of this part, heading up, selecting section view, and the section, I'm going to select the front plane. To select that, head over to the design tree, selecting the green check mark. Let's utilize split once more, heading over to mesh modeling, selecting split. Trim tool to be our internal body. Selecting Cut Bodies. Let's start off by selecting the section here. Selecting Body 2. Hovering over. Left click. So notice it turns into a purplish color. Heading over to Body 4. Left click here and left click. So once more it turns into purplish color. Selecting this one as well. Selecting this one. Selecting this face. We're all set. And selecting the green check mark. Let's now turn off the visibility of the splitted bodies. Selecting this body, turning its visibility off. Same with this body, turning its visibility off. Hiding this body. Same with this body. And finally, this body as well. Selecting hide. Let's zoom in. And uh, utilize Split once more. Trim Tool to be our main body. Selecting Cut Bodies. And uh, selecting this body. Right clicking and selecting OK. Let's now reselect this body and turn its visibility off. Let's inspect our surface bodies. Heading over to front view. Before we turn all of the surface bodies into one, let's first patch up this hole. Heading over to surfaces, selecting fill the surface. And that patch boundary will be this sketch or edge. Right-clicking, selecting OK. Let's turn off our section view. Select this sketch, turn its visibility off. Heading back to front view. And this time, heading over to knit surface. For selections, I'm going to create a window selection. Under Selections, enabling Create Solid and Merge Entities. Leaving the defaults, 
selecting the green check mark. Notice we now have a solid bodies folder with a solid body. Let me head over to front view, hitting our spacebar for orientation, selecting front. Recall that we created a spline here. And before we split this body into two, let's first add fillets, heading over to features, selecting fillet, creating a window selection, release, making sure that this edge is not selected. For the radius, I prefer one, hitting enter, in addition, let's make this part hollow. I'm going to head over to Features, Selecting Shell. Let me exclude this face. And for its thickness, I prefer having a thickness of 2 millimeters. Leaving the defaults. Let's check and see a preview. I'm okay with this, right click, selecting okay. Next, let me turn on the visibility of the spline here, which is under surface revolve one, selecting sketch three, and the selecting show. Next, let's head over to surfaces, selecting extruded surface, selecting this spline, Heading over to top view, let's change the direction to mid plane. Let me pull this arrow, I'm okay with this distance, selecting the green check mark. And let's turn off the visibility of the sketch, selecting any entity, selecting hide. Let's now turn this solid body into two. Heading over to Mesh Modeling, selecting Split, Trim Tool to be this Surface Body, selecting Cut Bodies, selecting this body and this body, selecting the green check mark. Notice under Solid Bodies folder, we now have two solid bodies. Let's turn off the visibility of the Surface Body Selecting hide and to pronounce the separation between these two bodies, let me first turn off the visibility of this body. Let's add a fillet, heading over to features, selecting fillet. I'm going to clear out this selection. I'm going to select this edge, radius to be 0.5. Selecting the green check mark. Let's turn on the visibility of split 26. Turning off fillet 9. Selecting fillet. Selecting this edge. Radius to be 0.5. Selecting the green check mark. And turning on the visibility of fillet 9. Okay, so sky is the limit. Okay, guys, so I want you to improve upon uh, what we have created here. As you can see, you can add uh, buttons here, add uh, additional details. And from this, you can move further, but you take note, of course, uh, the design for manufacturability uh, being this part. Uh, to be subjected to injection molding. So the design of those uh, plastic molds take into con consideration how you are going to assemble and uh, manufacture this. So once more, that is surface modeling to create uh, quick concepts, quick product concepts in solid work. So hoping you learned, you have learned a lot, of course, uh, once more, we will be uh, 
having a version, an online version course for this. Okay, I'm flashing uh, the link, the URL. Okay, uh, feel free to enroll in that course now and probably hoping this uh, weekend that we can uh, make it live. Okay, so to those who joined us this evening, and uh, to those who joined SolidWorks uh, Users Philippines, uh, thank you also via Dunyo, Jandre Daxento, Lois, Agarin, Kurt De Castro, Aaron Bautista, Beatrice, uh, Brian Gutierrez. Okay, so if you think what we're doing here is uh, beneficial to someone you know, please invite them to join us. Sana po uh, nakatulong kami. And our mission here is, yeah, for you to learn and master SolidWorks. And in the future, when you have mastered uh, the software as well, hoping you'd also both volunteer to share your knowledge, most especially to the young ones. So again, in Tagalog, <laughs> Uh, pag naging malupit po kayo pagdating ng araw, uh, hoping you can share, be a blessing din. No? We trained you and hoping you can train the, train the next generation as well. Invite the young ones to be an engineer or anything uh, or anything for them to have a profession as well. STEM, STEAM-related profession. Let's influence, inspire them with the use of uh, CAD software. This time using uh, SolidWorks. Okay, so again, we are accepting OJT's interns. And if you are interested in making a positive difference, not only to the Philippines, but of course, our reach with these live streams is worldwide, uh, join us. Okay, and yeah, uh, share your knowledge. Be a blessing. Okay, mas okay na yung may ginagawa kaysa... <laughs> kaysa it's a tambay daw, okay? And again, your output will be recreating this. Sky is the limit, okay? Apply your creativity, di ba? Uh, again, add anything anything you like to make this more uh, awesome. Again, that is surface modeling and quickly creating uh, product concepts or prototypes. Using SolidWorks. So in addition, yes, we do have a certification exam for SolidWorks. If you're interested in that, in that uh, don't hesitate to contact us. And if your school is not yet uh, using SolidWorks, uh, please tell them to reach out to us. We are here to help. We are here to make a positive difference and in influence, inspire the young ones, uh, hoping uh, them to take up STEAM, STEM-related profession. Say, sharing to you this video, and uh, Ms. Nelsey will uh, go back to you for some announcement, or if you have questions, or if you want uh, a speaker, or if you can organize a minimum number of attendees, we are open for that. Sharing to you this video about SolidWorks uh, certification exam. I'm here to meet students as they take their first step on their journey to SOLIDWORKS certification. It's always good to have it on your resume. It's uh, always a step in front of people that don't have the certification. I think uh, it's better to have the, the certification for the, for the upcoming uh, jobs that I want to do. You always practice on school, but now you have a certification, so now you can prove it. Just really helped me get a job. It got me a lot of job interviews as well. Wacom's latest line of interactive pen displays provide a natural and ergonomic way for industrial designers and engineers to work in CAD programs like SolidWorks and Fusion 360. Wacom's new ProPen 3D is designed for CAD modeling and provides the same functionality as a three-button mouse, opening the door to driving CAD programs on screen for improved comfort and productivity. Working with a pen on screen is more natural and ergonomic than using a mouse and creates an immersive CAD experience as users feel more connected to their work. Wacom devices streamline the design process because they integrate with most design software programs. CAD software titles like SolidWorks recognize pen and touch 
as an effective way to create 3D geometry, and they continue to implement built-in pen functionality. Fusion 360 is also optimized for pen input and is an efficient and ergonomic way to use Wacom's newest technology. Getting familiar with the Wacom devices will help you dive right into the CAD software and create models with confidence. Most of Wacom's Cintiq Pro displays have built-in multi-touch capabilities and give you full on-screen control using your finger or a Wacom pen device. With these touch features in place, there are tremendous software enhancements that come from touch interactions, producing an interactive and efficient workspace. There's also a convenient digital keyboard that can be brought up on screen. Touch capabilities can be turned on or off, and the display can be moved around to the position and angle you'd like using the different Wacom ergonomic setups, such as the Wacom Flex Arm I'm using here. Speaking of pen devices, the Wacom Pro Pen 3D is a newly designed pen that optimizes the 3D experience with the Cintiq Pro displays. This pen gives you full navigational control in 2D and 3D software in most on-screen applications. There are a few primary controls that make the pen experience natural and comfortable. The tip of the pen is used for clicking on screen, which is the same function as using the left mouse button. The three buttons along the side of the pen can have their functions customized for different software titles. The default settings for 3D modeling software are generally set to Rotate for the front button, Pan for the second button, which can also be used to zoom when the button is held and the tip of the pen is dragged on screen, and Right Click for the rear button, which can also be used to activate gesture controls on screen. The third Wacom device that enriches the design experience is the Express Key Remote. This is an additional handheld device that allows users to set custom shortcuts and keystrokes in one convenient location. This provides streamlined access to the most commonly used software commands, having different commands assigned to each button per software title. For example, this key here can be assigned to activate the pen command in SOLIDWORKS, while that same button is assigned to activate the circle command in Fusion 360. However, it's important to note that any key on the keyboard can be mapped to any of the keys on the remote, enabling you to customize your workflows to your preference. While this remote is mobile and can be held in hand, it can also be conveniently held on the side of the Cintiq Pro display using built-in magnets. This frees your hands to interact directly with the display while keeping the most important commands close by, activating them in a fraction of a second. Now that you're familiar with the features of these powerful devices, let's look at how they enhance seamless modeling workflows in both SOLIDWORKS and Fusion 360. Thanks everyone for joining and if you have questions you may send us you may send a message at SolidWorks uh, Users Philippines Facebook page okay and to those who are asking about the certificate of course completion for master part modeling once you have submitted an output will respond to your email okay thanks everyone for joining and we'll see you next month that will be july to friday at 7 p.m here in solidworks users philippines facebook page and youtube channel bye everyone